Hello, this is Ms. Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss naming ions and ionic compounds. Today's essential question, which you need to answer in your summary, is how are ionic compounds named? Okay, before we start, make sure you have your periodic tables handy. All right, we will start by how to name cations. And there are two different rules for naming cations depending on the location of the metal on the periodic table. So first, we'll talk about naming metal cations coming from groups 1A, 2A, and 3A. So these guys here, okay? Naming metal cations coming from groups 1A, 2A, and 3A. It's really easy. Cations coming from groups 1A, 2A, or 3A get the names directly from the elements from which they are formed. K1 plus is called the potassium ion, okay? If we had Ca2+, plus, that would be the calcium ion. Okay. So naming metal cations coming from groups 1A, 2A, 3A, really, really easy. All right, now let's try naming cations coming from metals in groups 3 through 12 and 14 through 16. Okay, so... That's all the transition metals. And these guys right here. Okay. The way I remember it, instead of trying to remember um, the rule is for groups 3 through 12 and 14 through 16, that gets a little confusing. I remember they're the metals that are not groups 1A, 2A, 3A. Okay. All right, so there's a really sad story about these guys here, the groups 3 through 12 and 14 through 16. Cations formed from these metals can never become like noble gases. They'd have to lose way too many electrons. So they can never fulfill their dream, right? Their dream is to be like the noble gases. They can never get there. They simply become closer to noble. They still try. They lose electrons. They lose one or two or three. They lose those electrons. They try their best, but they never get there. But because of that, you can't actually predict what the ion is going to become because it never becomes a noble gas or like a noble gas. So when an element forms two or more different types of ions, okay, and again, these are basically the transition metals, um, we, use the, we use what's called a Roman numeral. Um, to distinguish between them. So, for example, Cu1 plus is going to be copper Roman numeral 1 ion, whereas Cu2 plus is going to be the copper Roman num numeral 2 ion. So Roman numerals are the same number as the transition metal charge. The Roman numerals basically identify the charge. And we only use Roman numerals in the formula, not the name. And really quickly, for those of you who don't know your Roman numerals, um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You shouldn't have to go past that. Roman numeral one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, let's learn how to name anions. Um, naming anions is a slightly more difficult, difficult than naming cations, but not much. Okay, the difference is the name of the anion also comes from the name of the element, but we change the ending. Okay, we drop the ending to IDE. So the nonmetal name ending is dropped and IED is added. I-D-E, sorry. Okay, so here's a list of the dropped endings. Um, you might want to write these down. It's not something you really need to memorize. It's, um, you can. It'll actually, it's pretty obvious. Okay, so for example, if we had oxygen, we're going to drop the egen, and it'll be oxide. Okay. If we have, let's see what, selenium. We're going to drop the em, and it's going to be selenide, and so forth. Okay, so not a big deal. 
Okay, we've learned how to name ions. Let's now learn how to name binary ionic compounds. So the name of binary ionic compounds, which are also known as salts, consists of two words. You start with the name of the cation, cation first, followed by the name of the anion. Okay, that's it. So let's try this. First one is CaCl2. The cation is Ca. Now, if you remember, naming cations is dependent on if it's from group 1A, 2A, or 3A or not. So look at your periodic table. Is Ca from group 1A, 2A, or 3A? It is, which means when we name it, we don't need to use Roman numeral or anything, right? We just write the name. So Ca is calcium. And the anion is this Cl here. Cl is chlorine, but it's the anion, so we have to drop the ending. We'll drop the ene, and we'll have chloride. So this is calcium chloride. It doesn't matter that there's two chlorines. The name is just calcium chloride. Okay? All right, let's try the next one. Zinc 1 sulfide. We're going to go backwards this time. We're going to write the formula. Zinc 1. Why is there a Roman numeral there? Well, zinc is a transition metal. It'll never become like a noble gas, so we don't actually know how many electrons he lost without looking at the periodic table. So we have that Roman numeral 1, which tells us it's Zn1+. Right? And then for sulfide, we have to go through the, um, the whole thing to figure out the... Sorry. You have to go through the whole thing to figure out the, um, the charge on a sulfur ion. So you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. So it's a, it's a non-metal, so he's going to gain electrons. So he is going to gain 2 and to make 3p6. So sulfide is s2 minus. Okay. Then we have to, to, to write the formula. We've got to make, make them neutral. So we need to add another Zn1 plus. So our final answer, oh, these cross out because they're now neutral. So we have Zn2s. All right. A couple practice problems. There's three. Hit pause, do number one. Then hit play and see how you did. Hit pause, do number two. Hit play, see how you did. Hit pause, do number three. Hit play, see how you did. Please go through these problems. Don't just watch me. Okay, number one, let's see how you did. We're going to be writing a formula this time. We're starting with magnesium because magnesium's the, the, the cation, the positive one. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. All right, so for magnesium to become like a noble gas, it's a metal, so he's going to lose electrons. I'm going to double check if that's really noble gas configuration, and it is. That's like neon. So magnesium is going to be Mg2+. Okay, and then we've got bromine, bromide, which is really bromine. And he will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. Okay, and when bromine becomes an, becomes like a noble gas, he it's a non-metal, so he's going to gain electrons. One to become 4p6, so he's going to be Br1 minus. All right, just like we've been doing. Put these two side by side, Mg2 plus Br1 minus. Um, we need to make the charges neutral. Right now we have a 2 plus and a 1 minus. That's not going to work. We can add another Br. So now we have two minuses and two pluses, so charges cancel out. And we have Mg1, and we have two Brs. All right, K2S. This time I gave you a formula, so you're going to write the name. So we start with the metal, which is potassium. It doesn't matter how many potassiums there are. There are two, but don't worry about that. It's just potassium. So be, remember, there are two different rules for naming cations. 
So we need to look at the periodic table, find out if potassium comes from group 1A, 2A, or 3A. If it does, we don't need to use a Roman numeral. And potassium is in group 1A, so he's just going to be potassium. Okay, that's an I there. And then we'll do the nonmetal, which is sulfur. Sulfur is an anion, so we drop the ending, right? We drop the er, and we're going to have sol Fide. So K2S is potassium sulfide. All right, and last problem. We have lead 4 oxide. Now, the reason for this Roman numeral is that that is the charge. Remember, anything that does not come from group 1A, 2A, or 3A, any cation, has to have a Roman numeral because we can't figure out the charge because it'll never be like a noble gas. So IV is a four charge, right? So we have lead four plus, and then we have oxide, which is oxygen, right? And oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So to become like a noble gas, he's going to add two electrons to be 2p6 and he'll be isoelectronic with neon, so he's going to be O2 minus. All right, so now we check. Are the charges neutral? They are not. What do we need to do? We need to add another oxygen. Now we have four pluses and four minuses, so we can cross those out and then write our formula. We have PB, only one of them, so we don't write a number there. O, we have two O's. There you go. That's it.